In this video, I'm going to be going through an example of simple linear regression using Excel. Now, regression is one of the most widely used predictive modeling techniques in use anywhere. And this pretty much makes it imperative that you know enough to be conversive in the topic. In its simplest form, which is what this video will cover, we use one variable, say how big a house is, to predict the value of another variable, say its selling price. Now, if you look in a textbook, the variable we're using to predict with is called an independent variable or an explanatory variable. And the variable we're predicting is called the dependent variable. Its value depends on the value of another variable. Now we aren't saying that one variable is causing the other, but we are saying that they're related. Usually we start this process with a scatter plot to see if there is a relationship. And this technique works on linear relationships. So if the variables aren't related in sort of a straight line, then we use some other technique. Okay, so here I have plotted the square footage on the x-axis, the independent variable, against the sales price on the y variable. And we can see that, well, the relationship isn't perfect, but that as square footage increases, sale price also has a tendency to increase. If we imagine a line plotted plotted through here, okay, a best fit line, then we would also notice that, okay, all the points are not on that line, okay, some of them are above and some of them are below, okay, the difference between that line that we put in here and the observed points is called the error, all right, and so we want to see how well does our line fit the data, how big is that error. Now, before I jump into the Excel spreadsheet, there's a couple of things I want to say about the error. In order to have a valid regression, we need to make what are called the linear regression assumptions. All right, and that is that the error is random. The error is normally distributed with a mean of zero. The variance of the error stays constant. So as square footage increases, uh, we don't see a tendency for the variance from that line to increase too. All right, and then there is no autocorrelation in the error. So a negative error does not predict either a negative or a positive subsequent subsequent error. Okay, with that, we'll jump into Excel and take a look at our data. Okay, so this data is fictitious, but what we've done is get some square footage here and then get a, a sales price. And you'll notice that the sales price is scaled to hundreds. All right, so this 5,700 is really a selling price of 570,000. The reason we do that is to make the model a better predictor of the dependent variable. Okay, so once we get our data and we're pretty sure there's a linear relationship there, we're ready to go ahead and run our regression. And to do that in Excel, we're going to go to the data tab and we're going to look for the data analysis group. If you don't see it, and I don't see it here, I'm going to hold the Alt key, press T, and then I. This is going to call up the add-ins dialog box, and I'm going to check the first box there, analysis tool pack. Okay, now when I go to data, I see the data analysis button. So I'll go ahead and click that. And there's a lot of statistical tests we can run in here. Okay, so this isn't just for regression, but I'm gonna scroll through till I find regression, select it, and then click OK. So it's looking for two input ranges. It's looking for the Y first and then the X. So our price is the Y. I'll select that column. And our square footage is the X. So I'll select that column. Okay, you'll notice that the data is labeled here. So I'm going to check this box. All right, so you'll only check that box if in fact the data has labels in the first row. If you check this box when there aren't any labels, the first observation becomes your labels. Okay, so we have a number of options where to output this. All right, so I'm gonna leave the default there and then I'm going to check off the residuals and the residual plot. So we'll be able to examine directly uh, some of the results. Okay, with that done, all we do is click OK and Excel does all the heavy lifting. 
Okay, so then all that's left to do then is to interpret the results, okay? And so I'll just start at the top, and I'm going to not talk about everything in here, but just the things that we most typically are interested in in a regression. All right, so the first thing we're interested in is this multiple R, right? This is otherwise known as correlation, okay? So if you're at this point where you're running regression, I'm sure you've heard of correlation. Uh, for some reason, we call it multiple R here. The next thing we're interested in actually tells us how well the model fits our data. So this R squared is the result of squaring the correlation. There are other ways to calculate it, but you can just square the correlation and you'll get R squared. Okay, and 0.82 indicates that 82% of the variation in price can be predicted from the variation in square footage. Okay, so R squared takes a value from 0 to 1. All right, so if it was a perfect model, we would see an R squared of 1. All right, unfortunately, that doesn't happen in life. So we have to determine, okay, is 82% pretty good? Yeah, I'd say 82% is pretty good using a single variable. We can estimate 82% of the variation in the selling price from the house's square footage alone. Moving down to the ANOVA table, we're presented with several statistics, and I'm going to talk about the error measurements, which can be used to calculate R squared. The first term we see is the sum of the square error due to or explained by the regression line. The second term is the unexplained error. And if I sum them, I get the total error. So R squared can be calculated as the ratio of the explained error divided by the total error. And we're gonna look at the, the lower panel here, which actually presents our model. Let me spread things out a little bit. Okay, so this describes the linear model that will graph a best fit line through the data. All right, so we're going to start with a y-intercept at negative 222, and for every square foot, we're going to increase the sale price by 2.12. Okay, and below here, we have the price that's predicted from this model. Next to that, we have the residual. Was the price predicted too high or was it too low? All right, so we can see they're kind of all over the place, ranging from about 450 to just 10. All right, the next thing we want to do is determine whether or not, in statistics speak, the model is statistically significant. And what we really mean by that is, what's the probability that we get this result just by random chance? All right, so there are two values here that speak to that the t stat and the p value and these are two methods of expressing the same thing but in this setting the p value is somewhat easier to interpret so ultimately what we want to do with our model is generalize it to any house being sold since we're dealing with a sample of houses we can't be absolutely sure that our sample is representative of the larger population and that's really what we're talking about when we say statistical significance will our model be generalizable to the larger population in order for our model to be significant, we have to be able to conclude that the slope of the line from the regression is not zero. One way of interpreting the p-value is as the probability that the slope is zero. So what we're looking for here is a low probability. In most cases, a probability of less than 0.05 will be enough for us to conclude that the slope is not zero. In the most conservative of cases, a probability of less than 0.01 will allow this conclusion. In this regression, the p-value is a 1 with 19 zeros in front of it. So much, much lower than 0.05 or even 0.01. And so we can safely conclude that the slope of the line is not zero. We're also given a confidence interval of the slope. Like any statistic, the slope is an estimate and it's an estimate of the population value. So the confidence interval presents a range within which we have a high degree of certainty based on the statistical procedure used, that the population slope lies. Okay, one more thing. Let's just take a look at the residuals. And what we're looking for is uh, randomly placed uh, pl points here. All right, so we're looking for something that does not display any relationship between the X and the Y. And we're looking for some plots being below zero and some above. And we can see that that in fact is true here all right what you're also looking for is that these points don't sort of tend 
to get wider or narrower at one end of the plot. Okay, so on the, I'm just going to copy these. On the initial sheet, the question we asked is, okay, is square footer a good predictor of sales price? And based on the regression, it looks like it is. Are there more things that we could add in to get a better prediction? Probably. All right. And if we did that, we would have more than one variable to explain the sales price. And we'd call that multiple linear regression. All right. The other question is, uh, how much do we expect a 2,000 square foot home to sell for? And using our model, I can paste the values in here. Using our model, we can predict the sales price as the y-intercept plus the square footage, 2,000 in this case, times the slope. We would expect to sell that house for $402,149 and some change. So I hope that helps with simple linear regression.